The Septuagint is a translation of the Hebrew Bible and some related texts into Koine Greek. As the primary Greek translation of the Old Testament, it is also called the Greek Old Testament. This translation is quoted a number of times in the New Testament, particularly in Pauline epistles, and also by the Apostolic Fathers and later Greek Church Fathers. The title and its Roman numeral acronym LXX refer to the legendary 70 Jewish scholars who solely translated the five books of Moses into coin. Greek as early as the 3rd century BCE, separated from the Hebrew canon of the Jewish Bible in Rabbinic Judaism. Translations of the Torah into coin Greek by early Jewish rabbis have survived as rare fragments only. The traditional story is that Ptolemy II sponsored the translation of the Torah. Subsequently, the Greek translation was in circulation among the Alexandrian Jews who were fluent in Koine Greek but not in Hebrew, the former being the lingua franca of Alexandria, Egypt and the Eastern Mediterranean at the time. The Septuagint should not be confused with the seven or more other Greek versions of the Old Testament most of which did not survive except as fragments. Of these, the most important are those by Aquila, Symmachus, and Theodotion. Name. The Septuagint derives its name from the Latin versio Septuaginta interpretum, translation of the 70 interpreters, Greek, mu epsilon tau alpha phi rho alpha sigma iota sigma tau nu beta delta rho micron mu eta kappa rho micron nu tau alpha, he metaphrasis tun hebdom conta, translation of the 70. However, it was not until the time of Augustine of Hippo that the Greek translation of the Jewish scriptures came to be called by the Latin term Septuaginta. The Roman numeral LXX is commonly used as an abbreviation, as a or g. Composition. Legend. These titles refer to a legendary story according to which 70 or 72 Jewish scholars were asked by the Greek king of Egypt Ptolemy II Philadelphus to translate the Torah from Biblical Hebrew into Greek, for inclusion in the Library of Alexandria. This legend is first found in the pseudepigraphic letter of Aristeus to his brother Philocrates, and is repeated by Philo of Alexandria, Josephus and by various later sources, including Street, Augustine. A version of the legend is found in the tractate Megala of the Babylonian Talmud. King Ptolemy once gathered 72 elders. He placed him in 72 chambers, each of them in a separate one, without revealing to them why they were summoned. He entered each one's room and said, Write for me the Torah of Moshe, your teacher. God put it in the heart of each one to translate identically as all the others did. Philo of Alexandria, who relied extensively on the Septuagint, says that the number of scholars was chosen by selecting six scholars from each of the twelve tribes of Israel. History The date of the 3rd century BCE, given in the legend, is supported by a number of factors, including the Greek being representative of early coin, citations beginning as early as the 2nd century BCE, and early manuscripts datable to the 2nd century. After the Torah, other books were translated over the next two to three centuries. It is not altogether clear which was translated when, or where, some may even have been translated twice, into different versions, and then revised. The quality and style of the different translators also varied considerably from book to book, from the literal to paraphrasing to interpretative. The translation process of the Septuagint itself and from the Septuagint into other versions can be broken down into several distinct stages, during which the social milieu of the translators shifted from Hellenistic Judaism to early Christianity. The translation of the Septuagint itself began in the 3rd century BCE and was completed by 132 BCE, initially in Alexandria, but in time elsewhere as well. The Septuagint is the basis for the Old Latin, Slavonic, Syriac, Old Armenian, Old Georgian and Coptic versions of the Christian Old Testament.
language some sections of the Septuagint may show Semiticisms, or idioms and phrases based on Semitic languages like Hebrew and Aramaic. Other books, such as Daniel and Proverbs, show Greek influence more strongly. Jewish Koine Greek exists primarily as a category of literature, or cultural category, but apart from some distinctive religious vocabulary is not so distinct from other varieties of Koine Greek as to be counted a separate dialect. The Septuagint may also elucidate pronunciation of pre-Masoretic Hebrew. Many proper nouns are spelled out with Greek vowels in the LXX, while contemporary Hebrew texts lacked vowel pointing. However, it is extremely unlikely that all ancient Hebrew sounds had precise Greek equivalents. Disputes over canonicity as the work of translation progressed, the canon of the Greek Bible expanded. The Torah always maintained its preeminence as the basis of the canon, but the collection of prophetic writings based on the Jewish Nevi'im had various hagiographical works incorporated into it. In addition, some newer books were included in the Septuagint. Those called Anagini or Stamina in Greek, known in English as Deuterocanonical because they are not included in the Jewish canon. Among these are the Maccabees and the Wisdom of Ben Sira. Also, the Septuagint version of some biblical books, like Daniel and Esther, are longer than those in the Masoretic text. It is not known when the Ketuvim, the final part of the three-part canon was established, although some sort of selective processes must have been employed because the Septuagint did not include other well-known Jewish documents such as Enoch or Jubilees or other writings that are not part of the Jewish canon, and which are now classified as pseudepigrapha. However, the Psalms of Solomon, 3 Maccabees, 4 Maccabees, the Epistle of Jeremiah, the Book of Odes, the Prayer of Manasseh and Psalm chapter 151 are included in some copies of the Septuagint, better source needed, some of which are accepted as canonical by Eastern Orthodox and some other churches. Since late antiquity, once attributed to a council of Jamnia, mainstream rabbinic Judaism rejected the Septuagint as valid Jewish scriptural texts. Several reasons have been given for this. First, some mistranslations were ascertained. Second, the Hebrew source texts, in some cases, used for the Septuagint differed from the Masoretic tradition of Hebrew texts which was affirmed as canonical by the Jewish rabbis. Third, the rabbis wanted to distinguish their tradition from the newly emerging tradition of Christianity. Finally, the rabbis claimed for the Hebrew language of divine authority, in contrast to Aramaic or Greek, even though these languages were the lingua franca of Jews during this period. As a result of this teaching, translations of the Torah into Koine Greek by early Jewish rabbis have survived as rare fragments only. In time the LXX became synonymous with the Greek Old Testament, i.e., a Christian canon of writings which incorporated all the books of the Hebrew canon, along with additional texts. The Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches include most of the books that are in the Septuagint in their canons, however, Protestant churches usually do not. After the Protestant Reformation, many Protestant Bibles began to follow the Jewish canon and exclude the additional texts, which came to be called Apocrypha, with some arguing against them being classed as Scripture. The Apocrypha are included under a separate heading in the King James Version of the Bible, the basis for the Revised Standard Version. Final form see also table of books below. All the books of Western canons of the Old Testament are found in the Septuagint. Although the order does not always coincide with the Western ordering of the books, the Septuagint order for the Old Testament is evident in the earliest Christian Bibles. Some books that are set apart in the Masoretic text are grouped together. For example, the books of Samuel and the books of Kings are in the LXX one book in four parts called Beta, Alpha, Sigma, Iota, Lambda, Epsilon, Iota, Nu. In LXX, the books of Chronicles supplement reigns and it is called Paralipomenon. The Septuagint organizes the Minor Prophets as twelve parts of one book of twelve. 
Some scriptures of ancient origin are found in the Septuagint but are not present in the Hebrew. These additional books are Tobit, Judith, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Jesus, Son of Sirach, Baruch, Letter of Jeremiah, Additions to Daniel, Additions to Esther, 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, 3 Maccabees, 4 Maccabees, 1 ESD Ras, Odes, including the Prayer of Manasseh, the Psalms of Solomon, and Psalm chapter 151. The canonical acceptance of these books varies among different Christian traditions, and there are canonical books not derived from the Septuagint. For more information regarding these books, see the articles Biblical Apocrypha, Biblical Canon, Books of the Bible, and Deuterocanonical Books. Incorporations from Theodotion in most ancient copies of the Bible which contain the Septuagint version of the Old Testament. The Book of Daniel is not the original Septuagint version, but instead is a copy of Theodotion's translation from the Hebrew, which more closely resembles the Masoretic text. The Septuagint version was discarded in favor of Theodotion's version in the 2nd to 3rd centuries CE. In Greek-speaking areas, this happened near the end of the 2nd century, and in Latin-speaking areas, it occurred in the middle of the 3rd century. History does not record the reason for this, and St. Jerome reports, in the preface to the Vulgate version of Daniel, this thing, just happened. Several old Greek texts of the Book of Daniel have been rediscovered recently and work is ongoing in reconstructing the original form of the book. The canonical Ezra Nehemiah is known in the Septuagint as ESD Ras B and 1 ESD Ras is ESD Ras A. 1 ESD Ras is a very similar text to the books of Ezra Nehemiah, and the two are widely thought by scholars to be derived from the same original text. It has been proposed, and is thought highly likely by scholars, that ESD Ras B, the canonical Ezra Nehemiah, is Theodotion's version of this material, and ESD Ras A, is the version which was previously in the Septuagint on its own, use. Jewish use pre-Christian Jews, Philo and Josephus considered the Septuagint on equal standing with the Hebrew text. Manuscripts of the Septuagint have been found among the Qumran scrolls in the Dead Sea, and were thought to have been in use among Jews at the time. Starting approximately in the 2nd century CE, several factors led most Jews to abandon use of the LXX. The earliest Gentile Christians of necessity used the LXX, as it was at the time the only Greek version of the Bible, and most, if not all, of these early non-Jewish Christians could not read Hebrew. The association of the LXX with a rival religion may have rendered it suspect in the eyes of the newer generation of Jews and Jewish scholars. Instead, Jews used Hebrew, Aramaic Targum manuscripts later compiled by the Masortes, and authoritative Aramaic translations, such as those of Onkelos and Rabbi Jonathan ben Uziel. What was perhaps most significant for the LXX, as distinct from other Greek versions, was that the LXX began to lose Jewish sanction after differences between it and contemporary Hebrew scriptures were discovered. Even Greek-speaking Jews tended less to the LXX, preferring other Jewish versions in Greek, such as that of the 2nd century Aquila translation, which seemed to be more concordant with contemporary Hebrew texts. While Jews have not used the LXX in worship or religious study since the 2nd century CE, recent scholarship has brought renewed interest in it in the field of Judaic studies. Christian used the early Christian church used the Greek text since Greek was a lingua franca of the Roman Empire at the time, and the language of the Greco-Roman church. The relationship between the apostolic use of the Old Testament, for example, the Septuagint and the now lost Hebrew texts is complicated. The Septuagint seems to have been a major source for the apostles, but it is not the only one. Saint Jerome offered, for example, Matt 2.15 and 2.23, John chapter 19 verse 37, John chapter 7 verses 38, 1 Cor. 2 to 9, as examples not found in the Septuagint but in Hebrew texts.
the New Testament writers, when citing the Jewish scriptures, or when quoting Jesus doing so, freely use the Greek translation, implying that Jesus, his apostles and their followers considered it reliable. In the early Christian church, the presumption that the Septuagint was translated by Jews before the era of Christ and that the Septuagint at certain places gives itself more to a Christological interpretation than 2nd century Hebrew texts was taken as evidence that Jews had changed the Hebrew text in a way that made them less Christological. For example, Ioneus concerning Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, the Septuagint clearly writes of a virgin act shall conceive, while the Hebrew text was, according to Ioneus, at that time interpreted by Theodotion and Aquila as a young woman that shall conceive. According to Ioneus, the Ebionites used this to claim that Joseph was the father of Jesus. From Ioneus' a point of view that was pure heresy, facilitated by anti-Christian alterations of the scripture in Hebrew, as evident by the older, pre-Christian, Septuagint. When Jerome undertook the revision of the old Latin translations of the Septuagint, he checked the Septuagint against the Hebrew texts that were then available. He broke with church tradition and translated most of the Old Testament of his Vulgate from Hebrew rather than Greek. His choice was severely criticized by Augustine. His contemporary, a flood of still less moderate criticism came from those who regarded Jerome as a forger. While on the one hand he argued for the superiority of the Hebrew texts in correcting the Septuagint on both philological and theological grounds, on the other, in the context of accusations of heresy against him, Jerome would acknowledge the Septuagint texts as well. With the passage of time, acceptance of Jerome's version gradually increased until it displaced the old Latin translations of the Septuagint. The Eastern Orthodox Church still prefers to use the LXX as the basis for translating the Old Testament into other languages. The Eastern Orthodox also use LXX untranslated where Greek is the liturgical language, e.g., in the Orthodox Church of Constantinople, the Church of Greece and the Cypriot Orthodox Church. Critical translations of the Old Testament, while using the Masoretic text as their basis, consult the Septuagint as well as other versions in an attempt to reconstruct the meaning of the Hebrew text whenever the latter is unclear, undeniably corrupt, or ambiguous. For example, the New Jerusalem Bible Forward says, only when this presents insuperable difficulties have emendations or other versions such as the LXX been used. The translator's preface to the New International Version says, the translators also consulted the more important early versions the Septuagint.